Hey folks, so I recently purchased my first electric vehicle, a 2023 Chevy Bolt EUV, for which I've already shared an online review. I've been taking plenty of notes since that review and will update the same when I hit the 5,000 mile marker, but wanted to share the results of a recent experiment that tests Chevy's predicted battery range relative to actual performance when driving in steep terrain. Specifically, I'm interested in how predicted battery range will compare to actual miles driven over a 95-mile round-trip excursion to Marshall Gulch on Mount Lemmon. For the experiment, I'm most interested on the impact that this steep mountain grade will have on the Chevy's predicted range when compared to actual miles driven over the course of the trip. To help with the experiment, I logged field notes and videos of road conditions which were geolocated over the course of the trip, details of which are included in a separate section of this video. For those of you who just want me to cut to the chase, I'll share my lessons learned for these given conditions. When driving up to the top of Mount Lemmon from the valley bottom, your vehicle's predicted battery range is actually about 38% of what you'll need to make it to your destination. As a rule of thumb for climbing grades similar to this one, you'll want to divide your predicted range by three to determine your actual range for your given battery charge. If you don't take this into consideration, you might have to cut your trip short as you watch your predicted range drop due to higher power requirements to get your vehicle up that hill. When driving down the hill, your predicted battery range is easily double what you'll need to get to the valley bottom and is likely much higher. I also learned that the cumulative effect of driving up and down the mountain adds miles to your predicted range in the short run, but that impact will diminish as you drive in the valley bottom after your return. The most important conclusion is this one. Specifically, if you have to climb a mountain over the course of, say, 20 miles, make sure your battery range reads at least 60, and to be safe, maybe 80 for conditions shown on this slide. Supporting those conclusions, here's a table of the data collected over the course of my trip. This column shows the total miles driven, taking into account odometer resets. And this column shows the cumulative miles impact on my battery based on Chevy's expected range readings. And this column shows the difference between total miles driven versus impact on my battery determined from my remaining expected range. Negative numbers in this column indicate that terrain is negatively impacting my expected range, likely due to extra energy needed to get me up the hill. And positive numbers indicate that terrain is positively contributing to my expected range, likely due to less energy needed to get me down the hill, coupled with regenerative braking. Finally, this column shows my vehicle's performance in the context of miles per kilowatt hour, similar to a miles per gallon calculation on a gas vehicle. Smaller numbers suggest I'm realizing fewer miles per kilowatt hour due to extra energy needed to push my car up the hill. And larger numbers suggest I'm getting better mileage per kilowatt hour due to gravity keeping my car in motion as I roll down the hill. To ensure those mile per kilowatt hour numbers were indicative of specific terrain conditions, I reset the trip computer at critical points so that the calculated miles per kilowatt hour were specific to a given terrain rather than an accumulation or an average over the course of the entire trip. Taking a closer look at the data, let's first focus on this leg of the trip, which is where the grade increased significantly as I started to climb the mountain. That part of the trip correlates to these highlighted cells where you can see the negative impact on my range due to the increased power requirements for pushing my car uphill. You can also see on this slide how my miles per kilowatt hour decreased significantly in response to the vehicle powering up the hill, dropping from 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour to 1.8. And if you do the math on those numbers, you'll see that the initial predicted battery range is about 38% of what I'll need to get to the peak of the mountain prior to my destination. On the return, most of the travel is on a declining slope which correlates to this part of the table. Looking closely at the data, I observe that my predicted battery range is at least twice what I'll need to get to the bottom of the hill and is likely much higher. In fact, for hills that are mostly descending, I wouldn't worry too much about range since the regenerative braking that's realized as you hit those road curves will actually add miles to your range over time. 
Finally, for the entire road trip, I actually gained about 35 miles in my predicted range. I don't think any energy was actually created by the trip. Rather, it's just a manifestation of the abnormally high miles per kilowatt hours registered during the downhill part of the drive that's getting averaged into predicted ranges. Having said that, it's just good to be aware that the cumulative effect of driving up and down that hill adds miles to your predicted range. The effect will slowly diminish as you return to your normal driving habits, driving on flat terrain. For those of you who want to see details of the actual drive, the next section includes videos and comments of the trip used to prepare the data and conclusions shared in this video. Hey folks, so I've got the Chevy Bolt um, charging right now. I set it up to 100% charge. I'm still charging off 110 even though I do have a 220 um, outlet. I figured that the 110 is probably better for battery longevity. The reason I set it up to 100% charge versus what I typically charge to, which is 75%, is we're taking the car up to Mount Lemon. And I was surprised to see that upon doing that, it's telling me that I'm gonna get a range of close to 296 miles and it's not even fully charged yet. So that tells me that uh, probably the uh, flat terrain in Tucson and driving habits can really extend the, the mileage you can get out of a full charge. And I'll go back to a 75% charge after today's trip. I just wasn't sure uh, how driving up a mountain was going to impact uh, the ability of this uh, little electric to, uh, to deliver. All right, folks, we're starting to climb up the mountain a little bit. You can see that our uh, average miles per kilowatt hours is about 4.7. We've done about 20 miles close to it, and our range is 278. So uh, the math adds up on this if you account for our average miles per kilowatt hours. It's obvious that that's how that number, 278, is being calculated. see that we're starting to climb the mountain here and uh, that number should actually drop. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset our trip odometer to uh, see what our new miles per kilowatt hours is going to be going up the hill. You can see here that it's been reset. And here we go. All right, so you can see now that driving uphill has dropped our miles per kilowatt hours down to 2.6 and then our expected range is now 238 miles it was originally 278 uh, and uh, we lost uh, 40 miles of range driving uphill after only actually driving 7.4 miles so that's kind of interesting it's just something to be aware of when you're driving up mountains in an electric vehicle Approaching Windy Point, and our miles per kilowatt hour have dropped drastically. We're at 1.7. We have a range of 204 uh, after having covered a distance of only 14.8 miles.
46 miles. So obviously because we're driving in a different terrain. So some adjustments had to be made in the calculations, but still not bad. Got about 186 miles of range left. So no issues driving this EV up to the top of Mount Lemmon, uh, a little less than 50 miles for the whole trip. All right, and we're gonna reset the odometer and the, the trip meter. We're headed home. All right, folks, we're a little over 10 miles into our trip. And look at that, our uh, miles per kilowatt hours has jumped to 8.7, 8.9. And uh, our range is now 187, so we're gaining range on the way down the hill. Let's see, we still have a long way to go to hit the valley. Right, and we're driving through Windy Point. And right now, we've got 13.6 miles per kilowatt hour in a range of 191. All right, we're driving into the sun. Sorry about that, but you can see we're coming out of the pines and into the oaks. And we've been driving for about 15 miles. And it uh, looks like our average is 51.1 miles per kilowatt hours. And our range is 207 right now. Folks, we're hitting the Saguaros now. We're about 22 miles into the drive. 51.1 miles per kilowatt hours, and now my range is up to 234. So it looks like I'm uh, putting the miles back on the battery, uh, probably because we're using this regenerative braking, which really helps coming down hills because we don't have to use our brakes on, on curves like this one. Just about at the bottom of the hill, a distance of about 26 miles, and we've got 248 miles of range, and we're going to reset it now for the flat driving as soon as we get to the bottom of the hill. So this is the stop sign where we set it last time, so I'm going to go ahead and reset it now. lovely day at Marshall Gulch. We're back in our community, so let's take a look at the mileage. All right, and we just pulled in, and let's see what we got. So 239 miles of range remain after driving about 100 miles. We started at, I think it was 299 or 300. So we got about 100 miles on the trip and only 70 showing up on our expected range. And we're currently at 6.5 miles per kilowatt hour after our last reset. All right, folks, so I reset the odometer one last time and took a drive uh, downtown to chaperone my kids to the mall. You can see that my round trip was 17.2 miles. Uh, I got an average of 4.3 to 4.4. Down. This is more in line with uh, what we typically uh, realize for our driving style. And again, here are the results of the data collection summarized earlier in the video. These conclusions are specific to my vehicle and driving conditions, but they may be useful to others who live in other parts of the country and are trying to figure out what kind of range they might realize in hilly terrain. In a future video, I'll share more of the good, the bad, but mostly good details about how this vehicle is serving my needs, at least over the first 5,000 miles. I really look forward to uh, driving this over the years, and uh, if you'd like to know my initial impressions, check out my 500-mile review via the link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.